is Helen stood in front of her mother with her hands on her hips, glaring at him suspiciously. Nick glanced around the room. After years of training, he could glance at a room and almost snap a picture image of what he saw in his mind. This apartment was a tiny one bedroom. White carryout boxes of food that Barney had sent over sat on the uh, kitchen counter, and the Christmas tree from the restaurant food st uh, stood in front of the window. There are crayon Christmas pictures on the refrigerator with the kids' names on them. An old banged up 19 inch old uh, VHS TV with a VHS player sat on an old wooden green painted box. An ancient lumpy looking couch faced the TV. Only a few toys and four children's books sat on a battered coffee table. A tiny white table with four spindle chairs filled the kitchen area. The house was clean, but bare. Nick realized that he must appear like a skyscraper to these children. So he immediately got down on his knees in front of Helen to make himself less imposing. Are you really Santa Claus or only a fake one? <laughs> well, if I said I was a real one, I could be lying. So how do you propose to check me out? The fake ones always wear a fake beard. All right, give mine a pull, but not too hard. Why not? Has anyone ever pulled your hair at school? Yes. Hurts, doesn't it? Oh, I see. You have really blue eyes, Santa. And Mr. Tracer has really blue eyes. And you have big shoulders like Mr. Tracer, and your voice sounds like him, too. Yes, poor Mr. Tracer. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm a lot older than Mr. Tracer because I'm Santa, and children are always telling him he looks like me. Then you really are Santa. Oh, I wasn't sure you'd come. Oh, it's all right. Old St. Nick is here, and you're going to have a wonderful Christmas. Oh, we can't. Mom got fired. You got fired on Christmas Eve? The owner wanted things for me that I didn't want to get. <laughs> I'll bet he's married, too. Nick Tracer would be happy to stop by and have a serious conversation with this creep. No, no, I don't want any trouble. If I didn't need a job so desperately, I'd almost be happy to be away from him. Besides, I got a call from the building manager when I got home. I was already two weeks behind in my rent, but she told me that the owner called and forgave the rent for this month. Then she told me not to worry about next month's rent either. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? That Rafino Thomas has been a good little boy this year. I see. I hope when you see him, you tell him how much I appreciate his kindness. And the tree and the food. I don't suppose you'd know anything about that either. Why, Mrs. Schweider. Linda. My first name is Linda. Ho, ho, ho. Old Santa knew that. I was just trying to be politically correct. <laughs> For the first time since Nick had entered the apartment, Linda Schweider smiled, and Nick suddenly realized how pretty she was. Hey, if you're Santa, then you can get my mom a new job, right? Helen, Santa's already done some wonderful things for us. We mustn't be greedy. I'm not being greedy if I want something for you. I'm only being greedy if I want something for myself. I even told Mr. Tracer to not have Santa bring me anything. Isn't that what he told you, Santa? Well, Helen, that's partly correct. Mr. Tracer said that's what you told him. But he also told me that he thought you were a very brave little girl and that I must include you on my list. Really? Really. And here's what I suggest we do. Why don't you all help me by placing the gifts I've brought under the tree? All right. This one is for Susie. Go put it under the tree. And
and this one is for you. For me? <laughs> Santa gives very good hugs. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you for caring. I hope it wasn't breakable. Ho, 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 not breakable. In some houses, it's a tradition that one gift can be opened on Christmas Eve. But of course, the other gifts must wait until Christmas morning. Hmm. But I wouldn't want to suggest anything that is unacceptable to your mother. I think it's a grand idea. <laughs> oh, Mommy, oh, oh, Mommy, it's the most beautiful doll in a whole wide world. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Santa. <laughs> Do you know its name? Triceratops. That's right. Very well done, David. Not many little boys know his name. I realize, David, that not many Triceratops come in red and green with polka dots. <laughs> <laughs> but this is one of my favorites because he's so soft and cuddly. He's wonderful. I like his colors. Me too. This Triceratops came from my home to yours, especially for you. Do you like Triceratops dinosaurs too? Oh, they are my favorites. <laughs> you open your gift, Mom, and I'll open mine. I don't know. You better open it first. It might not be anything you'd like. A bedspread. It's pink. My favorite color. And it's just beautiful. I don't know what to say. Linda, your smile says it all. All right, Helen, it's your turn. Oh, it's a DVD of my favorite movies. But Santa, we don't have a DVD player. <laughs> yes, yes you do, Helen. While Santa knows many things, he wasn't sure you had a DVD player, so Santa brought an extra one. Would you like me to hook it up for you? Oh, yes, yes, please. please. <laughs> Once hooked up, the children sprawled on the floor in front of the TV, watching the movie, while Santa and Mrs. Schweider sat at the tiny kitchen table having a cup of tea. So, Santa, what is Mr. Tracer doing for Christmas Eve dinner tonight? He doesn't have any plans. This wasn't how he was expecting to spend his Christmas Eve. Oh, was he planning to go out on the town with his wife and family? No wife, no family. Normally, he's just alone on the holidays. How sad. He doesn't have any family? To be honest, he usually just drinks away Christmas. But not this Christmas. Why is this Christmas different? He was hired to find Santa. It's turned out to be the best case I've ever had. Do you think he might like to come to dinner with us? I suddenly have enough food to feed five families. Oh, I, I wouldn't want to impose. Children? Would you like it if Santa asked Mr. Tracer to join us for dinner? Remember, Mr. Tracer was the one who found Santa and brought him to us. He's pretty mean, but I still like him because he told Santa to bring me some presents. I bet he's not mean. He probably thought you were too bossy, that's all. I did not. Did so. <laughs> Children, we don't fight and especially in front of Santa. <coughs> Everyone who thinks it would be a good idea to invite Mr. Tracer to dinner, raise their hand. <laughs> well? Yes, ma'am. I'd say that would be the grandest offer Mr. Tracer could get. But uh, th there's a slight problem. Nick motions for her to lean over closer so he can whisper in her ear. Oh, Santa, that is a problem. But I just might be able to help. Are you a modern-day Santa? 
someone who carries a cell phone? I can't afford a phone. Nick pulled a cell phone out of his pocket and gave it to Mrs. Schweider. Mrs. Schweider goes into the bedroom where the children could not hear her and a few moments later returned with a smile on her face and she whispered, My neighbor, Graciela, is a budding actress. She thinks she can help you with your problem. Children, put the movie on pause and say goodnight to Santa. He has to go now. Santa got down on his knees, and the children rushed over to him and gave him a group hug. He got up quickly and rubbed his eyes. You are a dear, Santa. Just some dust in my eyes. Right. Children, I have to show Santa where his next stop is. Helen, lock the door after I've left and don't open it unless it's me. I don't need to remind you again about opening the door for the men from the restaurant, do I? But Mom, they said that Nick Tracer sent them, so I knew they were okay. Helen? Yes, ma'am. I won't open the door again unless it's you. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Nick, will you have to go back home to get your regular clothes? No, I placed them in the Santa box in the trunk of my car. My car is in the visitor's parking space. I'll run down and get them while Graciela takes care of your problem. They hurried down to Graciela's apartment. Once inside, Graciela looked up at Santa and said, So, no, we have a Santa who can't get his beard off. Oh, you didn't use spirit gum, did you? <laughs> that bottle was all dried up. All I found was a bottle of Grafto or something or other. Uh. <laughs> hey, that's it. Is it bad? Not really. If you want something to stay on, it's the best, but not when it comes to getting it off. This is not sounding good. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> I've got the remover, but it doesn't resolve, dissolve the adhesive. I'll need to work it under the beard to loosen the adhesive from your skin, and then I'll just have to be careful not to strip off too much of your skin from your face uh, <laughs> as I rip it off. <laughs> Maybe I'll just shave it off. Oh, just kidding. I'll have to pull some, but it'll come off. You're the strong, patient type, aren't you? Blimey. This sure has turned into an amazingly curious day for me. <laughs> Santa, do you want to give me your car keys and tell me what sort of car you have so I can go down and bring up your clothes? Well, it isn't hard to find. Just look for the brightest red sports car in the visitor space with the top down and the license plate, Tracer 1. Mm, did Helen really go to a detective's office and hire him? How'd you know that? Well, Linda saw me right after she got home, even before she saw her kids. Uh, she was so upset about losing her job. And then she ran back and told me about the tree and the food and the rent. She said that Helen told her this story about how she hired this famous detective. But Linda wasn't quite sure if Helen just made it up or not. She didn't make it up, but he's not so famous. Hmm. Did this detective hire you, or are you the famous detective? I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Never get testy with a woman who's removing hair from your face. <laughs> Ouch! It's <coughs> very good advice. I confess I'm the detective. Name's Nick Tracer. Good to know you. Nice to meet you, Nick Tracer. You know, Linda's a great mother and a very close friend, and she's had some rough times. I would be extremely unhappy if anyone, anyone took advantage of her. Linda made me promise not to go down and pound her old boss. That was not what I meant, but I'll go with you for that. Well, oh, Graciela, I can promise you that I'm not here to take advantage of Linda. Oh, I don't know. A big, good-looking guy, probably had lots of women in your life, not afraid of anyone. I bet no one can put you in your place. Helen can. She knew how to put me in my place this morning. <laughs> not the mom, but an eight-year-old kid? You might be all right, Nick Tracer. Two young men with blue jackets stopped me and wanted to know what I was doing around your car. When I explained, 
They said for me to tell Santa not to worry about his sled. They would make sure it was safe. What was that all about? Ah, uh, that's Rufino's <coughs> new security. A while back, he hired me to help get all the vandalism and graffiti under control around his apartments. He owns six apartment complexes in this area, so it's costing him lots of money for security and cleaning up. I got hold of one of the gangs in the area and had them meet me at the Presbyterian Church. A friend of mine, Toby, is the youth minister, and he agreed to help out. You got a gang to go to church? Yeah. It was a scene, all right, but I can be pretty persuasive when I have to. Hmm, now why doesn't that surprise me? Anyway, I figured most of those kids were the same ones causing all the problems, and what we needed was getting them on our team. So I just hired them all to become the security force. I explained to the leader that they could make more money dealing drugs and stealing, but sooner or later, they'd all end up dead or in jail. You don't believe in sugarcoating, do you? I offered them a choice, where they could all have a real job and start thinking about a future. It helped that three of their gang were sent to prison last month, and two others were gunned down in a drive-by shooting a while back. Mm -hmm. We bought them blue security jackets to wear, and Toby worked with the leader setting up their schedules. They work in pairs, have radios, and work two or four hour shifts, depending on their age. We're working on teaching them about social security cards, bank accounts, and all that stuff. Rufino told me his places have never had so few problems, and it's even saving him money. What's all that we stuff? Oh, well, I help out when I can. They're a bunch of kids, and Toby can only do so much. Besides, most of them don't have a caring father figure. And Rufino pays you for that? 